Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Switch City, where we're doing our power rankings from ranking every team from 30 to 1. If you guys have missed, we have already broken down five teams in the Nets, Wizards, Blazers, Jazz, and Bulls. In today's episode, we're going to be diving into team number 6, and that team, as you guys can tell from the thumbnail and from my picture over here on Switch City, we're talking about your Detroit Pistons. And you might see my picture and think, oh, you're a Detroit Pistons fan. I am not. I just really like that kind of jersey. And I really like the players that are in that picture with the exclamation they're showing. So we're going to dive in, look at the additions, subtractions, who they brought back, who I like on this squad, who I don't really think fits in with this squad, and my overall record prediction for the Pistons this season as we get up for the 2024-2025 season. So without further ado, let's get into the video at hand. And like I just said in the introduction, we're going to be discussing this Detroit Pistons squad. So let's look in and dive into their re-signings, additions, and departures that they had happen this uh, season. For re-signings, they went out and brought two guys back. They re-signed their superstar player and former number one overall pick in the draft in Cade, cutting him to a five-year extension. And also brought back Simone Fontecchio, who played over with the Utah Jazz and was brought over at the trade deadline to be that Bojan Bogdanovic replacement. Now, this team did have three departures, one of them, two of them being in free agency, where Taj Gibson departed and went to the Charlotte Hornets to go be a um, piece in their locker room, and James Wiseman, who departed to left this logjam of a front court in Detroit to go over to Indiana to try to get himself a bigger role in a division rival. Quentin Grimes also departed as he was traded away from the uh, from the Pistons to the Dallas Mavericks. And in return, the Mavericks or the Pistons then received Tim Hardaway Jr., who they feel can be a nice shooter and veteran for this young team. They also made some additions in that veteran department as well, going after and bringing back in Tobias Harris on another two-year team-friendly contract and going out and getting Malik Beasley, who has been a solid shooter across the league, especially with the Milwaukee Bucks the last season. They also went out and got other players that I am very, very intrigued in on the younger department, looking out and getting Wendell Moore Jr. in a trade on draft day involving second-round picks. Wendell Moore Jr. didn't really have a role with the Minnesota Timberwolves, so him getting moved to a Detroit Pistons team, another young team where he can hopefully fight for a spot, that is nice. And Paul Reed was also claimed off waivers to kind of replace that hole of a front court piece in James Wiseman and Taj Gibson by adding Paul Reed after he was placed on waivers by the Philadelphia 76ers once they went out and got Andre Drummond, have Joel Embiid, and signed Adam or drafted Adam Bona in this year's draft. Now, when looking at this Pistons team here, we can look at their two-way contracts. We see we have they have some as well and some Exhibit 10 days. No names that I know off the top of my head. No in-depth players that I specifically recognize. And similar to some other teams that we've been breaking down, this Pistons team is filled with young talent, a team that wants to develop some of their young players. Players like Gabe Cunningham, whose contract extension will be kicking in next season, as you guys can see in the multi-year. He is one of the higher paid players, but Tobias Harris, Tim Hardaway Jr., these veterans for this team over in Detroit in their locker room. And Isaiah Stewart, also a little bit of a veteran for this franchise, even if he's not viewed as a veteran across the league. He's had some years uh, built up in Detroit and uh, has been able to work with those years as well but let's kind of dive in let's get into some players like i mentioned this pistons team has some youth movement some older players and in previous seasons they have stated that they would like to go into that houston rockets-esque type of development where we saw a couple of seasons ago where they went out and got fred van fleet got dylan brooks and still had their young core intact but we're getting going out and getting some veterans to add to that young core to make it a little bit of a win now uh home or to build that win-now culture in their area. Now, unfortunately for the Pistons, they haven't been able to kind of find those players to kind of seemingly bring in and do that. But I think with their additions of Tobias Harris, it's going to be fantastic. A lot of fans are hating on Tobias Harris after his contract with the Philadelphia 76ers. And I understand him being tasked to be a third star in Philadelphia, making $40, $40 million was outrageous. But the role, the contract that he is being tasked to do for the Pistons is perfect 
for a player like Tobias Harris. Come in, be a starting power forward slash three for this uh, Pistons team. Be a reliable focal point, a veteran for these younger players and younger wings. <clears throat> your first round draft pick to learn from, which we'll get into a little bit. And I think that is going to show the clear path for this Detroit Pistons team to kind of get out of this murky waters of this rebuild that has taken years to come and finally get into those front steps of actually getting this rebuild on their feet. So let's kind of dive in, look at some of the players I like with this team and some players that I don't necessarily think fit with this roster. Well, as you guys can tell from my picture over here on Swish City, I'm a big fan of the Detroit Pistons unis right here, these light blue ones, specifically these two players that are in these jerseys, and Jalen Duran and Jaden Ivey. Now, Kate Cunningham has had some injury-riddled seasons over the last couple of years, and I still think he is their future uh, point guard position and will be their cornerstone franchise piece. But Duran and Ivy, I believe, both can be complementary pieces and or additions to this Pistons rebuild to really spark it. Unfortunately for the Pistons and for Jaden Ivy, last season he came off the bench at the start, which was some questionable coaching decision making which then led to the Pistons not getting off to the right front. Once Ivy was inserted into that starting lineup and playing alongside Kate Cunningham, it seemed to seemingly work. Even though Ivy works maybe better as that point guard in a lineup of Ivy and Cunningham might not be the guard duo of the future that the Pistons envisioned a couple seasons ago, I do believe that Ivy can still be a contributor and playmaker with this unit as a scorer alongside Kate Cunningham, but then without Kate Cunningham on the court as a playmaker and facilitator. Now, Duran is also a fantastic shot blocker and rim protector for this Pistons squad. He is a very energetic offensive rebounder and defensive rebounder, and I really, really do like that. The one concern about Jalen Duran, though, is his defensive pressure and his quality on the defensive end. And will he be able to keep that intensity and insurance throughout the entirety of this season? If Duran can unlock that defensive side, specifically the young uh, center from Memphis, I truly think could turn into being one of the best centers of the future for this league and for the Pistons. It could be a cornerstone piece similar to centers that the Pistons have had success with, with the past in the Wallaces. I think a player in Duran can turn into that shot block. Maybe not as effective as that type of player, but a similar skill set type of player as the Wallace brothers for the Pistons in the past. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. I usually don't talk about rookies on these previews because a lot of the teams are very high on the rookies and a lot of focal point is already on these rookies on these young teams. So sometimes I don't like to stress about it and start talking about it. I'll give them their props. I'll give them their, you know, their flowers. But specifically with the Pistons, I'm not going to lie to you guys. There are not many other players that I really like. Like I said, Tobias, I think is a decent fit. But besides that, there are some other young players in Isaiah Stewart, Marcus Sasser that I think could be nice but I'm really, really high on Ron Holland Jr. And I think he's going to prove a lot of people wrong this year. Ron Holland, let's not forget, was a top-tier draft prospect just a couple seasons ago before going into the G League night, and then his draft stock seemingly kind of falling. And it looked like it could have even fallen possibly out of the top 10 at points, getting closer and closer to the draft, which was absolutely crazy to see due to the fact that we all know the talent that Holland can bring. Now, Holland inserts himself into Detroit, a team that kind of does lack that wing size and uh, depth at that position, which I really, really like. Asore Thompson's kind of uses a tweener at that that 2-3 position, and I think Colin can insert himself as a 3-4, either alongside Toby or replacing Toby for this team. I'm really, really excited to see what he can bring as a cutter, screener, rebounder, just all-out offensive beast and defensive beast, and I really, really want to see how he can flourish. Now, I know the main concern is you need to put shooters around Cade. Holland isn't the best shooter. He isn't going to be able to contribute at that rate, but I do think that Holland's going to help out on a lot of other sides of the floor that maybe the Pistons fans haven't really gotten to really worry about or care about due to the fact that they're always getting blown out anyways. I think Holland's going to really lock in on that defensive side and that rebounding for this Pistons team and I think is going to be a wing for them for the future and someone to definitely keep your eyes on and if you were low on Ron Holland going into the draft process or at the draft process you will be wrong I'm telling you that now when talking about players I dislike or don't really like with this team it's not players that I hate it's just players that I don't necessarily fit in with the system and there's really kind of only one player that I necessarily doesn't really think fit with the system and that is a player in Tim Hardaway Jr but on the flip side of things he is a veteran that is going to help them out. And even though he's had 
Not the greatest numbers as a shooter the last couple seasons in Dallas. Maybe a little bit of a revamp in a culture in Detroit. Could wake him up and be a pretty solid addition for this team. I don't think necessarily Quentin Grimes was in their future. They had a, other, a lot of young prospects they were developing and working on as well. And I think kind of replacing that with Tim Hardaway Jr. is a smart decision. So even though he might not be my favorite player or favorite fit, I'm not going to bash on him. I still think he'll be able to be better on the Pistons than he was on the Mavericks. I think the one question mark and kind of big glaring issue that we need to look at when we dis discuss this Pistons team is the head coach. And that is Monty Williams. Now, Monty Williams has had a pretty solid coaching career, obviously coached with the Charlotte Horn, uh, not the Horn, New Orleans Hornets, excuse me, then was obviously recently coaching with the Phoenix Suns, and then now coaching with the Detroit Pistons, where last season he was gifted the highest paid contract in NBA history as a head coach, and got the biggest losing record in all four major sports by doing so. Was it because he started Killian Hayes? Could be possibly part of it. Don't think necessarily that is the whole brunt of the, you know, issue. But ultimately, Monty Williams is on the heat watch or hot watch in my eyes. I don't think there's any players that could do anything wrong for this Pistons team. I think that it's going to be clearly a coaching issue if there's an issue. You have Kate Cunningham, who is ready to go. You have Jaden Ivey. You have Asor Thompson. You have B Isaiah Stewart. You have Jalen Duran. You have Marcus Sasser. You have Ron Holland. You have seven, and I'm saying this right now to your face, you have seven talents that you can grow, develop, see who can blossom, see who can work in your system. Trust me, these guys can work in your system. Not all seven of them are going to be busts. We all know that. One or two of them will look good, and it's all up to Monty to figure out who's going to work with Cade, if Cade's going to be that guy, or if Cade's not going to be that guy, who's going to be that guy, and who works the best around him. Detroit needs to get this rebuild off of its heels, into its fronts, and into a direction and pedaling. It cannot be, oh, let's do a rebuild stagnant, oh, let's do a rebuild stagnant, oh, let's do a rebuild stagnant. It needs to get it going, and by bringing in some of these veterans, hopefully this can be that jump start with Tobias Harris and Tim Hardaway to add this shooting and depth to this young squad already, who already wants to seemingly grow. Now, for my prediction with this team, going to have to say that I have the Pistons finishing 27 and 55, which is crazy to think compared to their last year's record where they were absolutely abysmal, getting at least almost double their games this season and wins. I'm telling you, this Pistons team is coming out hungry, ready with veterans. Kate is going to be determined. Jalen Duran, Isaiah Stewart, they are going to be ready at that center position, paddle forward position. You got Holland, you got Sword Thompson, Jaden Ivey, Tobias Harris, guys ready to deliver some on Fontecchio, Marcus Sasser. I'm really, really intrigued with how this team is going to look. They could disappoint. They could make me, you know, eat my own words. But I am buying into this Pistons team a bit. And I think they're heading into the right direction and getting started on this rebuild, which will be set to take place in maybe a year or two to be finally in that playoff push. But let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Do you guys think the Pistons coming here at the sixth lowest team in the NBA is too high, too low? Where would you rank them? What are your thoughts? Do you think my player evaluations were good, bad? How do you feel? Drop down your thoughts down below in the comment section. I appreciate everybody that tunes in. You guys are absolutely fantastic. We're going to be start cooking these up and doing them a little bit longer as well. So make sure to stay tuned. Like I said, all this news coming forward towards you. Getting ready for the NBA season, power rankings every single day. And then once the season starts, we'll have even more in abundance of news ready for you guys. Once again, I'm Bruce Flies. You guys are absolutely fantastic. Have a great rest of your day. Peace out, everybody.